Bits of a bite's no reorder In the order Yeah, who is an order? Yes, I'd can up so sush has got Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today to share these few moments together, to share this message with you. We do so in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, for the last several weeks, we've been talking about the period of Advent and the celebratory nature of this period as we celebrate and get ready for the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, namely Christmas, Advent, the time in the period of preparation. Today in that celebration, of course, we take a moment now to stop and reflect as most of the country, most of the world is reflecting, especially about the situation that took place in Sandy Hook in the state of Connecticut, in the most prosperous of all countries, the United States of America. Something that shouldn't happen, but that did happen. 20 young children being killed, assassinated at point blank range by a gunman who then turned the gun on six adults and then upon himself. And in the midst of all that horror, people look around and ask why? Why are these things happening? What's going on? Of course, some people look at it mystically. Some people try to find reasons for these events. One parishioner of mine came up to me and asked me, Dead Eyed, how do you make sense out of this? Well, you don't. Certain things are senseless. That's why there's a word senseless. There is no sense. You cannot make sense out of this. The beauty of God's gift, the beauty of life vanishing within a few moments. But there is an opportunity for us to look at these situations and reflect upon our Christian duty. As I've shared with you many times when we are invited to pray, and as we prayed, as we were invited, all of us, to pray for the victims and their families at Sandy Hook, this prayer is not about them. The prayer is about God giving us the strength to minister, to become the agents of God, to become the hands, to become the feet, to become the embrace of God, to become the presence of God. And after all, the Christian idea of church, and especially within Armenian Orthodox theology, that idea of church is the body of Christ, heaven on earth. It is the kingdom of God right now, which Jesus Christ enacted. And that kingdom is not a kingdom of all rosiness and good things. If you, wanna, if you want to, your life to be all flowery and everything, this is not the Christian message. He doesn't promise you a bouquet of roses. He doesn't tell you that life will smell good. If you want to smell good, you go to Mike Diamond. But if you're looking for a life of challenge, a ch life that is real, Jesus invites you with what? With the cross. He says, he who wants to follow me, let him pick up his cross. And that cross is a challenge. That cross has difficulties. It means there is pain. And certainly when we see events such as Sandy Hook, when we see events of these mass murders, we have to pause for a moment and realize that these are the crosses within life. And we as Christians need to help. We need to pick up those crosses. You know, when uh, this incident happened, it's very important for us to remember that in life, these incidents, we can't escape because they are brought into our homes by television, by, by newspapers, by the internet. But you know, every single day we have losses like this. When we hear about how the Israelis bombed the, the people in Palestine and you hear a statistic of 300 people died, well, within that 300 people, there are many children that belong also to families. When you hear about wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and you hear about people dying, well, there are children there too. And those lives that are lost are as equally as important in the sight of God as the lives that were lost in Sandy Hook. So the challenge for us Christians is not to isolate these incidences, but to understand that we have a responsibility to respond. You saw the first responders, how they went into that, those classrooms and they helped. They brought the love of God, they brought the love of their heart to those people. And it's difficult, it's not easy, but this is the challenge for us. 
And I invite you today. You know, we are right before the period of Christmas. In fact, in a few days, we will be celebrating Christmas. And unfortunately, many people get tied up with, well, I think it's become almost chic to talk about the, the commercialization of Christmas. You know, we worry about what are they saying at the counter? Do they say happy holidays? Do they say Merry Christmas? Some people even say, come up to me and say, you know that I had our Armenian Christmas is on January 6th, you know, as if they're gonna be teaching me something, you know? Let me tell you something. Christmas is every single day of your life. It means Christ being born. And when you can love somebody, you can extend yourself to somebody, that day is Christmas. That day means that Jesus Christ is born. And that has nothing to do with December 25th or January 6th. It has nothing to do with May 11th, August 18th. It doesn't have anything to do with the 30th or September. It just has to do with Christ being born. You see, we have opportunities on every single day of the year to make the presence of God alive. And these events that happen in Sandy Hook are brought into our lives, sure, because of the media, but the challenges for us, each and every one of us, as Jesus Christ did. Jesus Christ did not stop at one home and say, this is my ministry, but his ministry was life. All of life becomes a ministry for each and every one of us. To look beyond the Sandy Hooks and see that there are problems within our communities, within our world, outside of the scope of what we see and brought into our homes. Take the time to learn what's going around. Take the time to bring the presence of Christ into this world. On the eve of the first Christmas, Joseph and Mary were looking for a place to have the blessed event, to have Jesus Christ born. They went to many, many places. They approached the inns, the so-called hotels or motels of those days, and they knocked on the doors. But as you know from Holy Scripture, it says there was no room at the inn. And finally, our Lord Jesus Christ was born in a stable, in a manger, in the most humble of beginnings. And the animals around him witnessed the event of the birth of Christ. You know, those inns, those hotels are very much like our hearts. Jesus wants to be born in our hearts. Today in this country, in the United States of America, the greatest country that has ever existed with all of its powers, we're talking about gun control, we're talking about ways of uh, passing laws that will do this and that about medical attention for those people who are uh, suffering from mental illnesses. These discussions are going to go on. And unfortunately, there will come a time when people will forget this incident and will go on as their business as usual. The Christian can't forget. The Christian must be reminded that Christ wants to be born in our hearts, in our inn in that hotel of our lives. And once Christ exists in us, all of these other things come into play. Because as our great theologian, Saint Nerses Shnorhali said, the name of love is Jesus. So when we talk about Jesus being born on Christmas, what is being born but love? Love wants to enter your heart. Love wants to be born into your life. And you become born again in love. You have that opportunity to reach out to people. And so I'm inviting you. You know, we send out Christmas cards by the millions. We email one another nonsensical things like the Mayan calendar and thing, events of uh, December 21st. Things that you know and I know that there's no reason to it, but we like the suspense of it. Instead of spending that time on just sayings, let's send out a real card. On the Christmas card, let's write, Peace on Earth, Goodwill Towards Men. This is the message of Christmas. This is the message that the angels spoke to Joseph and Mary, spoke to the shepherds, spoke to the wise men. Blessed are you, because today there is peace on earth, goodwill to men. How does that peace come on earth? 
Well, it comes by love, by you and I being a witness to Jesus Christ in our lives, not just December 25th, not January 6th alone. Yes, on those days, as well as every other day of our lives, every waking moment of our lives, to be able to reach out with love. And so the invitation is an invitation of love. To say Merry Christmas to people and let them know that you are not looking for a life that is rosy, filled with roses or good smells or good things, but you are looking for a life that follows the Lord of this universe, the life of the cross, to be able to reach out to the people who are on their crosses, to be able to reach out to them and tell them that the love of Christ is with them. There is peace on earth, and it begins within. The invitation is to us to make this a real Christmas. So send out yourself, send out your card, send out your email. Send them out to the people in, in, in Connecticut, to their families, to the grieving people. Reach out in your community, to people who are shut-ins, to people who are suffering with difficulties. Reach out among the friends that you have and realize that their friendship shouldn't be based on the gifts that they give, but rather an honest friendship. You love them because of who they are. And whether they love you back is inconsequential. Remember, Jesus loved. Not everybody loved him back. In fact, most of the people didn't. They put him on a cross. But that didn't stop him from loving. And that's what Christmas is all about. Continue that love. Listen, in a few days, we're going to be celebrating Christmas. And you can watch this message any day you want. It doesn't have to be on December 23rd and say, oh, he said in a couple days and it's Christmas and everything. No, you can watch this message if you want on August 28th and say that, hey, in a couple days, it's Christmas. Yes, it's Christmas when Jesus is born. May the love of Jesus Christ be born in your life this Christmas day every single day. May our Lord and Savior's light, the peace that He gives, the peace that He brought to this earth 2,000 years ago and has continued for 2,000 years since, the peace that has been from the beginning of the establishment of the universe and the cosmos, the peace that comes from Jesus Christ, from God alone, may that peace be a part and parcel of each and every one of our lives. May this truly be a Merry Christmas filled with the blessings of God in your life. And remember to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.